question. If one was to go to Gibraltar, climb to the top of the famous rock, and look directly south, what country and continent would one see? If the opening credits of this short film hadn't given the answer away already, one may have been forgiven for suggesting Morocco and Africa respectively. Well, directly across the strait is the North African coast, but the peninsula in view is in fact a small enclave of Spain and is therefore technically Europe. Ceuta is one of two Spanish territories situated in mainland Africa. It is also one of the two mythological territories for the Pillars of Hercules. Legend has it that the son of Zeus smashed his way through the mountain range that once connected Europe and Africa together to create the Strait of Gibraltar waterway. The Rock of Gibraltar became the northern pillar of the Split Mountain. Today it's a beautiful nature reserve where each year thousands of tourists enjoy spectacular views, rare species of flowers and plants, recent local history and the ancient stalactites and stalactites of St Michael's Cave, illuminated in the 21st century by mobile disco lights. But of course, the most famous aspect of the rock these days is its wildlife. Grass snakes and the arachnids from Starship Troopers appear to inhabit it, but the most visible residents are the apes. The Barbary macaques have lived on the rock for centuries, believed to have been introduced by the Moors who kept them as pets. The apes appear tame, but be warned. They are wild, brazen and mastermind criminals pickpocketing tourists for anything worth eating, although sometimes it is just too hot to do anything other than sleep. The southern pillar of Hercules is located in Ceuta, but there has always been dispute over which peak it actually is. Some believe it is Mount Adjo that rises along the easterly tip of the peninsula. Most, however, are convinced that it is the higher peak of Hebel Musa, standing on the border of Morocco along the westerly end of the Spanish territory. The peak is known locally as the Dead Woman because it resembles a very peaceful and ample female lying on her back. Regardless of which peak is the southern pillar, Ceuta is very proud of its place in Greek and Roman mythologies, as is evident by the array of statues and sculptures honouring them. Yet it would seem that Ceuta needs little inspiration or excuse to erect any kind of statue. The territory is obsessed with them. Wherever one looks in the town, there is a statue or sculpture of something or someone, by the way, that one is not what it appears to be. Gibraltar has its own obsession, not with statues, but with warfare. As a long-standing strategic military base for the British, it is not ashamed to show off its sovereign's triumphs, heroes and might. Ceuta too has long been important in Spain's defence, displaying it less cocked, but no more subtly. Ceuta's port area is unapologetically Spanish. Almost deliberately, there is little African or even Moorish influence to be found there. Gibraltar too has its stereotypical props scattered around and plenty of Union flags flapping about, but even so, it too feels very Spanish as well. With such gorgeous Mediterranean architecture and even orange trees growing along its main shopping street, Gibraltar in parts feels more Seville than Seven Oaks. One other and most important similarity that Gibraltar and Ceuta have is their controversial sovereignties, disputed by the country they share a border with. For centuries, the Spanish have argued that the UK should return Gibraltar back to Spain. And across the strait, Moroccans have argued that Spain should return Ceuta back to Morocco. At least until the UK leaves the European Union in 2019, EU citizens can cross the British-Spanish border freely and as often as they like. 
the atmosphere is busy and friendly, mainly with local Spanish folk crossing the border daily for better paid work in Gibraltar and out again to return home in cheaper Spain. The Spanish-Moroccan border is reasonably busy too, but in contrast, and in my experience, is not a friendly place. As it is a frontier between Europe and Africa, it is heavily guarded and without the right visa is impossible to cross or even to get close to. Although often the fencing is stormed by African migrants and refugees willing to risk their lives to seek a better one in Europe. Like with Gibraltar, the one official gateway along the six and a half kilometre frontier witnesses plenty of Moroccans legally crossing in and out of Ceuta daily to travel to and from work. But unlike Gibraltar, few will be seen working in the tourist areas around the rich Spanish port two kilometres away. Warehouses and factories literally back onto the frontier fence and conditions in the area appear, by European standards, very poor indeed. One final similarity between the two territories, and a myth worth dispelling here, is like Ceuta and the rest of Spain and the rest of mainland Europe, but not the rest of the United Kingdom, traffic in Gibraltar drive on the wrong, sorry, right as opposed to the left side of the road. But unlike anywhere else I have ever come across anywhere in Europe to date, Spanish, British or otherwise, the main road out of Gibraltar doubles as the airport runway. It certainly makes a refreshing change to casually walk to an airport, but certainly unique to have to walk across the actual runway to get to it.